Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to begin with our backup Titan mission, but technically we're going to use this as the Saturn flyby mission. So we're going to toss this into a close approach at Saturn instead of to Titan, and we'll see how that works out. So throttle up, SAS on, we're close enough to our intended inclination so it shouldn't be any problem. Ignition. All engines running and lift off. Off we go. So in this episode mainly I'm going to be working on our space station, uh, Spaceport 2. We need to add a new module to it and then send crew up. But I'll be after, of course, getting this mission on its way. We're now past the speed of sound. Everything looks fine. We've lost one engine. Um, everything's still nominal. Uh, that looks like one of the booster engines, though. On that booster, so we'll keep that up so I can shut that down by cutting off the fuel. Seems to be an imbalance between kerosene and oxygen. I don't know why. Possibly we can get better performance by readjusting that. We had the fuel pumps on. Yeah, that's a pretty big gap. Makes me think that these don't have the right fuel in them. Possibly after upgrading the NK engines, they changed the fuel mix? It's possible. Okay, getting ready, shut down, and separate. Okay. You can see that booster is separating a little bit differently because it's got fuel in, right? The other ones separate normally, but that one was heavier, so the separatrons didn't push it away as far. And also the balance was different because of the fuel in the tank. So that's another hazard. If we lose an engine early on, the separatrons might not be powerful enough to push the booster away from the rocket. In that case, though, um, it's possible we can continue running that booster. Let it uh, run out of fuel. Just with the three working engines. Because all the gimbling should be able to handle the, you know, the center of thrust issue. In fact, the engines on the boosters are tilted just a little bit with respect to the body so that they go through the center of mass. Yeah, it's possible it'll still hold just fine. Okay, separation. Looks like some residual kerosene there. And ignition. Yeah, some residual kerosene in that tank I saw. Not good. This is our first launch of the episode and the first launch since I restarted the game, but the gravity losses seems to be weird. I don't know how it calculates that to result in that kind of negative number at the start. I'm gonna retain the fairings until we light the third stage. Second stage has seemed nominal and we're getting ready for the end of it. Everything seems good. And shut down separation and ignition. And we have our third stage. Now, of course, we are still carrying a little lander. 
Just because we're doing a close flyby of Saturn doesn't mean that the lander is useless. We could still toss it into Saturn and see what happens. That's not... That's not an unreasonable thing to do, I feel. We have loss of performance from the center engine now. Let's take a look. And... Nope. This one... It's just loss of thrust. The specific impulse is fine, so we'll keep it running. Okay, we are steadily making orbits. I'm locking the upper stage fuels so that when we turn on RCS, we don't use them. And we will be turning on RCS to turn, of course. Uh, oops, keep that locked. That should be locked. Okay, that's the orbit. And shut down. 221 by 202. And everything should be a go. That's just electric charge. Yep, I think everything is set up properly. Let's, uh, well, okay. Uh, just so I don't take more time than I need to, I'll let uh, MechJeb plot the maneuver. I also have this plot. I actually added in the transfer window planner. But as far as actually plotting the maneuver once we're in orbit, MechJeb is probably better than that because this maneuver assumes certain things about our location and timing that MechJeb won't. So let's just get rid of that. But yeah, transfer window planner is in. Here's precise maneuver. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it's only in 1.2.2 that has all the functions that I saw on the stream. It had a really nifty thing, but I don't see it right now. But th this is pretty good too. It looks a lot like uh, Maneuver Node Editor in MechJeb or Precise Node, but there was another thing. But I'll have to learn about it. Uh, let's see. Maybe there's a way to hide it? No? Oh, this is going to take too long. Let's ignite the engines and have them gimbal to the correct location. At least we're not too far off. Periapsis is going down quite quickly. Separation and ignition. Nine RL10 engines. Yeah, don't know what to make of that. Of course, we have to start the burn early enough so that we can get it done at the right timing. And we're like 30 degrees pitched down right now. We should get past our periapsis before actually hitting the maneuver node. We're probably we're about three minutes ahead of our periapsis, so I think we'll stay in space. And on the bright side, get optimal Oberth effect. Okay, we are now past the maneuver node. Everything looks nominal. We might have started bur burning just a little bit early, but uh, not too much off. There's bound to be some discrepancy, but I think we're okay. Especially since we'll be using the restartable Astros engines to finalize the trajectory. Okay, separation. And ignition. Oops, I forgot to unlock the fuel and now it's going to have issues, isn't it? Uh... Yeah, I'm going to have to come back to it. Okay, quickly, Space Center. Okay, what I feared has happened. Uh, the node has reset, so... Uh, come on, game. So, uh, let's just point prograde and... Hope that's now close enough. This node is nonsense. And... Uh, the maneuver node uh, creator in MechJab won't be able to handle this because we're already hyperbolic. We're already on escape. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try. Let's see. Yeah, initial orbit must not be hyperbolic, so... Nope. Well, that's backwards. 
Not really what I want. I'm not looking for a free return or anything. I think. Could that, like... That looks like it could actually be a boost to the sun, isn't it? We could get to a low solar orbit like that. Saturn could uh, bring us close to the sun. Didn't think about that possibility. We should do that more often. Maybe during the Voyager transfer we'll send some probes to, to the sun instead. Low solar orbit. Okay, we're getting close to the conclusion here. And... Oops. Let me turn that off. Shut down. Okay, I went too far. Stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, that's 14,000 kilometers. That's close enough to satisfy the contract. We could get closer. Probably arbitrarily closer. Let's see what happens when SAS tries to stabilize us now. Probably brings us further out. Yeah. Okay, so we have that. And that's just in Saturn's SOI. The other Titan shot has a maneuver in a year, which is still outside of Saturn's SOI. Switching between map view and the regular view is seems worse. I think I might reconsider precise maneuver after all. It doesn't have the features that it seems to have in 1.2.2 anyway. Okie dokie. Well, that's it for this probe. It is on its way. It's got much fuel. I don't want stage view. There we go. That's much better. And it has the same solar powdery as the other missions, so the the electric charge should not be a problem. Of course, it also has the RTGs as well. Yep, all good. So, Space Center. Okay, well, um, the launch pad exploded again. It's really got to stop doing that. Anyway, we've lined up with our target, which is the first module of Spaceport 2. We're launching the second module of Spaceport 2. Um, yeah. Well, I've got to turn off the destructible facilities thing, because it's just no fun, really. But uh, for now, we'll have to pay for it, because that's how it is. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. And we've got some relative inclination, but it should be all right. We can fix it along the way. The timing for the launch is good, though, so we'll go with that. All right, ignition. And launch. So after this, we'll launch crew modules with crew. And then they have to stay there for 30 days. Time to close this approach five minutes, so we would very much like to intersect its orbit then. We've got a problem with one of our engines. Uh, loss of thrust, specific impulse looks fine. Okay, no further problems so far. We're getting close to the end of the first stage. We do have a lot of pauses. Alright, separation. And ignition. Uh, the ignition thing didn't happen quite right, but okay. We lost our target. Come on. No, not the jello. Well, leftover jello. See, uh, you can see how much stuff I need to clean up. And this is without debris. Um, this is this is not showing debris right now. This is if you show debris. Yeah, so that might be why I have all the lag. I wish you could keep the debris so that you end. I mean, th there's a certain artistry and beauty to the fact that we have so much going on, and it looks like it's the real deal, right? It's uh, it's a proper realism overhaul save with uh, all of the debris and you know spent stages eventually it'll look like orbits around the earth so I sort of like that but not if it's gonna cause lag okay I'm gonna risk a fairing separation no lag alright fairings are clear 
Okay, I'm trying to manage this rendezvous, but it's a little bit difficult. We'll need some of the fuel from the station itself to get into orbit. I hope that was planned. No, these don't throttle. Okay, we are now coasting to Apoapsis and we'll use the station's own engines to circularize, separate, and okay, and how's the fuel situation? All right, ignition. All right, good deal. Let's get all the things out. Um, well, action group doesn't work, so manually and we could probably set up a rendezvous now too okay we are making orbit though I don't have a maneuver to actually meet up with the station just yet okay I've handled the necessary maneuvers we are now within render range of spaceport 2 and we only have 11.6 meters per second of relative velocity, so it should be pretty easy to rendezvous here. It's all about docking, of course. And I always have fun with that. But I need more practice, so here we go. Okay, here we go. I've decided to make sure that our port is connected so that in theory the propulsion modules are on the opposite sides uh, so that you know there's a theoretical connected living space even though I'm not using connected living space assuming you consider the food water and oxygen tank uh, a reasonable thing for crew to pass through and of course all the dock ports the downside is that that means our docking ports are really close together at least the ones that are radial as opposed to ones that are on the ends of the station. So that's the downside. It would be nicer to connect this side to the other module, which would allow us to uh, have the docking ports further separated, but then we've got the crew trying to pass through a propulsion module in order to get to the other portions of the station. So I decide against that. I've told the other side to kill rotation. I used Smarty SS to kill rotation on the other side because it was rotating. Um, I'm going to keep it on that and see what happens. Hopefully it'll just hold the module steady. There we go. Actually, maybe... Hmm. Maybe rotating by 90 degrees would have been a good idea, but we're a little bit late in the game for that. Okay, well, we're connected. And that's our station. I said uh, may rotating 90 degrees because then these big ports will be in line with these smaller ports, which might be nicer. But we are as it is. And that is our current space station. Two very similar looking modules. No kidding, right? And lots of food, water, and oxygen. Uh, no life support monitoring, but yeah, two full tanks worth and plenty of space. We've got four of the crew cabins, CO2 scrubbers and everything. We've got the Gemini adapter equipment sections with fuel cells. We've got the better electric charge generation thanks to the bigger solar panels on the other side. These solar panels weren't quite good enough but now we're all set with these larger ones. We could probably retract these but there's no current reason to. And plenty of space to dock. So Let's launch some crew up here and see what happens. All right, well, here we go with our crew transfer. Chris Leon Kerman and Gus Fred Kerman on the, the Kelly 4 on the Nico 707. And they're new recruits. And we're all lined up. So throttle up, SAS on. Yes, the pad is still busted and I haven't repaired it. I don't know how long we can go with... Uh, launching on a broken launch pad but they're letting us do it this time so let's not argue ignition and launch 
Actually, I said Nico 707. It's actually the 606. 707 was specially made to launch the new spaceport modules. Not necessary for this. This has more than enough redundancy. Chrysalian and Gus Fred do not look confident, honestly. I said I was gonna do testing with KOS. I really need to I really need to get on with that. Next time. Maybe next time. If I remember. We've been meaning to do this sort of spaceport stuff as well, so. We'll be leaving Chrisley and Gusfred on the station for 30 days. During that time, we could build some test rockets. Yeah, I mean, Chrisley and Stat said that she was very courageous. I'm so surprised by the expression at this point. It's not like we're even pulling high G's yet. Gusford, I don't remember what his courage was like. Well, if it turns out this, these new engines are very reliable, maybe we can cut down on how many we put on. This is a bit OP. Either that or we could use three Kerbal capsules instead of just transferring two another possibility. They seem happier at higher G's. The Kerbals do. Okay, separation. And ignition. Launch escape system jettison. Oh, uh, I didn't replace this stage. This stage is... well, actually we didn't have this rocket uh, built when we upgraded the NK-19s to NK-31s. So this is still using the NK-19s. So we'll have an upgraded system anyway. These are actually the less reliable engines. Still. Well, we're going to get real close. I might be overdoing it. We might end up in a very high apoapsis in order to try and get the... I'm uh, still... I've been paying too much attention to the closest approach distance. Fortunately, we have a lot of D Delta V in the pod, but this is a bit ridiculous. I need to shut down now. Yeah, it's going out of control. We'll let this deorbit separate. Alright, things are deployed. Okay, well, we can start out now. Uh, let's at least get the engines online. We've got lots of fuel. With 2,642 meters per second on board, not too concerned. We've got another version on the Nico 404, and that would have tighter margins. This isn't the Earth Orbit Edition, I think. This is a little bit more powerful. This is the proper Kelly 4, which can do much more than the Earth Orbit Edition. Target should still be behind us, so going into a higher orbit isn't the worst thing. And, oh, that's a minimum. Okay. We'll go with that. Okay, we are now in render range and approaching the spaceport. Now, I did check for contracts. Unfortunately, the, the 
base station contracts that we have, uh, well, the only one that I saw referred to our old space station and not this new one. And so, and of course, that's the one with the awkward gap between the food, water, and oxygen module and the crew module. So I don't want to use that one anymore. But that's the one it wants us to send crew to. So that's a bit awkward. It calls a crew rotate, crew rotation, of course, and that's what it would be if we used it again. But uh, I wonder if there's some way of telling the contract, uh, contract pack for stations that actually we want to do this station, not that one. Okay, we're getting a bit close. We're gonna dock on this end because that's the logical thing to do. Even though in this case they are technically passing through the service module. The other side is just a propellant only docking port and we don't want them, well they can't go through that in theory. Okay, so the docking ports we want are like on top there. I'm not going to dock it to the end of the station. I want to dock it on the side of the station. Alright, we are approaching and it occurs to me now that these are not retractable. Which is inconvenient when docking with a station. Might need to reconsider that particular design choice. Oh, looks like I should have started fixing this axis a little bit earlier. Uh, getting too close too early. Hope we have enough room for the solar panels. That looks pretty convincing right there. Um, uh, well, a little bit further to this side maybe. Okay, we have magnetism, RCS off, well we had magnetism, come on, there we go, all docked together. Alright, is the timer starting? Uh, yep, timer started for the stay in space of 30 days. Um, we obviously lost the stages that we launched. But here they are, Chrysalian and Gus Fred. Attack life support says two years and about 200 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, so no problems there. In fact, I, I think the spacecraft itself might have 30 days worth. I'm not sure. That's water and oxygen. Did I, tuck the, I might have tucked the food in this tank. Oh, well, there's food. Anyway, so yeah, they're good. And I think I'll leave it here for today. Lots of docking time really takes it out of one. But yeah, in the next episode, we'll try some, well, we'll see what I remember to do. Uh, but we'll probably be bringing them back as well. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.